Okay. I apologize for, every, for canceling on everybody the other day, uh, but God willing, it will be worth your while. Okay, let's let's definitely start. Okay, this class is anonymous and refuah shalema Mary Batsara, chayat sara bat chayat sara bat sara. May she hear good news, Mishrat Hashem. Anonymous for tremendous gratitude and shout out for the classes. May Hashem bless his family. May Hashem also assist Kol Yisrael in opening up more dot and the ability to steal time for, more, for Torah study in his bodidut. Anonymous for Yerucham ben Rivka, but Bracha Hatzala Parnasa, Abraham Mordechai ben Sigalit Siva, for Bracha Hatzacha Parnasa, and to help with all legal matter, matters in marriage. And Mordechai Shimon ben Esra for Vushalema. M- Muriel ben Simcha for protection blessing for me and my six children, and to thank Hashem for the classes that are helping her so much. Anonymous for Shalom Bayit and good peaceful communication, thought, speech, especially during this conflict. Children are very easy, natural for term, full term right now. And clarity from Hashem, and also for Parnassah Tova, for Rivka Bat Esther and David Ben Masha Miriam. Mash, mash, mavash Miriam. Ebi Hako, Ebi Hako for Parnassah and finding a good job. Ami Rosen for sponsoring for peace of mind and clarity mind of Chava Gitel Bat Etel. Tehillas by Yudis by Chava Gitel and Shmuel Lev Chaim Ben Chava Gitel in honor of Gedalia for his classes. Jonathan Ravashenas for Fushal Lema of Ariela Rivka Batsipora, all anonymous sponsors, anonymous for Buria Levaya Rivka, increased Yiddish and speedy marriage, anonymous Lunishmat Moshe Arye Ben Shmuel Yitzhak Halevi and, Yerch, and also Lunishmat Yachmil Daniel Ben Gedalia, anonymous for Fushal Lema for Yisrael Bes Idis, and also for Shmat the Sata Shmai Shalom Bais and the coming of the Mashiach. Anonymous for Fushu for Shimchun Ban Moshe Ben Dina, also Nina Shiduch, also for the success of Ilana Babracha, Miriam Spatsi Por Shoshana Bet Ella Miriam, and everyone should have a Havasi Kol Yisrael. In good deeds. Shalomat Miriam Ben Freidel for Lunishmat, Freidel Bat Rav Meir Halevi in the 13th Yurtzeit, Berman and Duvisky family for Lunishmat Esther Bat Yaakov Halevi, who passed away this past Shabbos. Adi Bat Siva for Help Parnasa Tova and Shara Ben Yosef, happy birthday and Help Parnasa Tova. Anonymous for Zev Ben Sipora ben for Help Parnasa Tova. Anonymous for Aharon Michal, Freida, Malka, and, Mir- and Shim- Sim- Simona Bat Sipora for Chupa and Simcha. All right. Today's class, Bizrat Hashem, is also in the success of a year of Elisha Vadavak, Adi Abel Neshava, Shev Neshava, Emel Bel Neshava, Reina Makav Tova. So today we're going to talk about his Bodidut. I just want to make sure the sound is really, really good. Believe me, I'm really, really putting all kinds of efforts to try to get the sound perfect. Um, I just want to make sure that the sound is really, really good. Especially, okay, perfect. All right, so today's class, we're going to talk about his Bodidut. His bodidut, the word his bodidut means to seclude oneself. Boded means to be alone. Rav Nachman referred to this as higher than everything. Rav Nachman told us in his class that his bodidut is higher than everything. It's greater than everything. The reason why we speak about this so much and we constantly strengthen ourselves because the Gemara clearly tells us that prayer needs a tremendous amount of strength. I can't tell you today how much we have and I don't know if anybody else has been feeling it, but specifically this month, we definitely feel a kotzer ruach. We feel a very shortened spirit. We feel a lot of, a lot of impatience. Um, I myself feel a tremendous you know, test of anger. And uh, you, There's no question this month of Tevet. There's definitely a lot of chaos this month. Um, and wh- where do we go? Where do we cope with all this chaos? What do we do with all this chaos? What do we do with all this pain? What do we do with all, all these things? And we have to come up with a strategy in order to, for us at least to relieve ourselves, etc. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. Strategies on how to do his bodhidut, what is his bodhidut, what time to do his bodhidut, and really, really a, a firm, really strengthen ourselves. If I could tell you today that the one thing, and you know, you guys all know the amount of followers and, and the amount of classes that we've done, if I could tell you that one thing when I constantly get emails, the one thing that people tell me, I started doing his bodhidut, I started changing my mindset, and my life changed. I can tell you that story over and over again. I started doing his bodhidut, I started talking to God, I started changing my perspective, and my life radically changed. Period. This is exactly what I hear all day long. I have enough track records to tell you what's working, guys, and what's not working. Many people mock this, this service of his bodhidut. It's not something easy to do. 
it was so easy to do, obviously we would all be doing it and we would all be happy. But it's so different. For myself, for example, I have not been able to do his bodhidut since even announcing this class. The past two to three days, my his bodhidut is completely off. So you could see the amount of the Yitzhahara. Any time we're going to start talking about something good, talking about something that could change our lives, this is definitely something that we're going to get tremendous amount of obstacles. When I first began doing his bodhidut, my first time in my life, I didn't get an answer in six months. So you could just see the amount of tremendous amount of being building a relationship and it's almost like I would re- recommend you know when you know when you start out with a therapist and when you start out dealing with something first you have to just talk it out I mean before we even get a solution to our situation before we even get the right strategy sometimes we just t- need to talk it out we just need to talk it out with somebody and <laughs> who else but your creator is the person to talk it out with I mean that's the first thing people tell you when that you're going through something just talk it out express it. Edith Ager says expression is the opposite of depression. Just express what you're going through. doesn't mean we're going to get an answer tomorrow. doesn't mean we have the strategy. But the amount, the ability for you to express things, I can't tell you enough. Today, because of the way we're wired and we're so focused on immediate gratification, we think if we just go out and express things, that's not going to, I'm not getting answers, nothing's changing. The first step to anything is expression because at least once you get it off your shoulder and you cast your burden on you to creator at least you, you you relieve yourself from 20 30 mental pounds now you can now look at that same situation completely different so i can't express to you the importance of just talking things out with people the gemara even tells us that a person has a problem in his life he should talk it out to somebody talking out it's so important and there's nowhere else nowhere greater than to talk it out with your creator. It's exactly what your creator is for. He's there to listen to us. He's there to take our burdens. He's there to help us. He's not there to punish us. But the problem is, we have to let him in our lives. If we let him in our lives, he, he comes into our lives. If we don't let him in our lives, etc. He's not there for us. So it's a very, very important time. This time especially, the month of Tibet, it's a bit, tremendous, tremendous obstacles. And we have to obviously work a little harder on, on getting that speech out and not holding that resentment in. So the first thing is obviously we, the, the concept of setting a specific time. If, you're gonna, if I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to ask you one question. Whatever you're successful, whatever you're successful in today, you have a specific time for and you have a specific schedule. Any, any area where you have a specific success in your life, ask yourself, do you have a specific time and a specific schedule? I can guarantee you that in areas that you have successful on, you definitely have a specific time. So it's very, very, very important that concept of having a specific time for, for something. Number one, you have to have a set time. Before we even, you know, if I want to talk to my creator, because I'm going to get so challenged in my life, I need to have a specific time. So I, perceive, I, I do things first thing in the morning. If I do it first thing in the morning, there's a good chance I'm going to be able to do that. There's a good chance it's going to happen. Once I get caught in the middle of the day, okay, you guys hear background noise? Okay, how's the, how's the noise now? Is it better now? Good? Is the sound better now? Perfect. Okay, so the, the concept of having a set time is very, very important. And meditation, anybody who meditates today, they need a set time. So before you ask yourself, ask yourself, can you make a set time? Because if you do something and you just do it, you know, five minutes here, three minutes here, and it's not done in a set time, that makes a completely, completely big difference on whether or not you're going to get results in that. So number one, first focus on the time. The second, before we get into the, 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 the rewards and et cetera for everything else, also you need a set place. It's very important you have a set time and a set place for it. It has to be usually the, the best, usually has to be the set time you should be in the same place. For example, it should be in the a, in a same place. For example, I do it outside in my house. Um, I do it at a specific time because when I'm getting there and in that time zone that, that mentally it's going to be much easier for me to express myself versus you know just going to some other place and not being focused. So set time, set place, number one, very, very important. Okay, so what's the, what's the real issue today? The real issue today is the way we're dealing with our situations. 
the way we deal with pain is four ways, or the way we deal with our emotions is four ways. Either we express them, we elevate them, we numb them, or we project them. The best way to take anything that's happening in your life today is to express it to your creator. Okay? The reason why is because when I express my things, I talk to my creator about what's going on in my life. Number one, I'm showing him that I have faith. Prayer is faith, believe it or not. There's no greater form of testimony of faith than prayer. Our sages say when Moshe's hands were up, they won the war. When his hands were down, they lost the war. Your hands represent faith. When your prayer's up, as long as you're praying, you're going to win the war eventually. If your hands are down, that means we, we're defeated. What our hands mean Kabbalistically, our hands refer to our pulse. If our pulse is high, if our spirits are up, then what happens? We're going to win the war. If our spirits are down mentally, then what happens? That our emotions take over. And this is exactly what we're dealing with today. The Kotzer Ruach and what happens is when we have this impatient attitude when we have this attitude of without checking in we, we just it, things just get worse and worse and worse and these days become darker and darker this is something we need to understand it's very important also the this part of the week Hashem says I did not reveal to them by the name of Yudke Vavke because they, their awareness was off so Reb Nachman tells us something very very deep when your awareness is off your speech is off. When your speech is off, God's mercy is hidden from you. So what practically what's, what that's telling us is, to the extent that we don't see God as the only solution in our lives, and we don't see that God is the only way we can fix anything in our lives, and we, we look at other ways to fix it, such as you know, fallen fears and fallen areas, what happens is we lose God's mercy. You can either depend on God to take away this virus, or you can depend on science to take away the virus. You know, that's just an example. Clearly, you could, you could see where it's going. <laughs> so the whole point in your, in your life is sometimes we're focusing in the wrong place. What his bodhidu does is it forces you to talk to God and deal with the issues directly with Him. So what you're pretty much saying is, I have faith and I believe that what I'm saying is going to have an effect. It does not mean we're there to watch a scoreboard. It does not mean we're there to have an instant gratification. It's there pretty much to check in. When we check in, we're avoiding most of the problems in our lives. When we check out, that is the invitation to most of our problems in our life. To the extent that you check in, it doesn't matter what you have. You can have an anger issue. You can have a, an issue with, God forbid, zero. Whatever issue you have in your life, you know, it could be a person doing, you know, her stealing. Whatever his, whatever he's got going on in his life. We, we, we don't know. We can't really judge. Everybody's got their own challenges. But to the extent that you speak to your creator in that obstacle is, the, is to the degree that you're going to get mercy in that situation. So that's the number one thing. You have to express things to you and you have to, number one, check in. Because faith believe, is the belief that God is the one in charge of everything. He's in charge of everything in my life. So the, to the extent that we do that, etc. Number two. Our Creator does, just, does not just want you to survive. Believe it or not. It appears today that we walk around, we just see people surviving. We see long lines for people get, to get tested. We, ju we, we just see, it looks like a survivor world. And it appears to us today that everybody's just reacting to life. And not too many people are creating. And I was talking to somebody the other day. I'm like, it, it, you know, this New Year's is a New Year's resolution for 2022. For what, Obviously, our New Year starts before. But you could see today that nobody's really talking about the New Year's resolutions like you would have normally in other years. You would say, wow, this year I'm excited to, to do this. I'm excited to that. It's because we're too stuck on fear this year. It appears to be that everybody's mind is just on fear. So what happens is, this is another method. When I'm living in fear and I'm living in reaction mode, I can't really create. I can't really try to hit goals. I can't try to um, get myself to the next level. That's another thing we have to be careful. If we don't have a proper way to deal with our emotions, such as speech, then we can't really, we end up all the time, gets, we get stuck pretty much in, in um, constantly reacting to life. We're reacting to this threat. We're reacting to that person's anger. We're, re we're reacting to this person. 
So life becomes a big reaction. And at the end of the day, all we want to do is check out when we get home. And we don't want to, we don't even have the head to even deal with our creator. So this is why it's very, very important that we, you, have, you need to set time to not just deal with the reactions, but you need to set time to sit there and manifest your goals, manifest what you want in life. You know, you have to play offense in life. And, you know, there's a, you know, you can't just play defense and expect to win every single game. So this is another thing. When we, when we were able to have that specific time, this is a time where I show my creator my desires. Creator of the world, I wish I can go to Israel. I wish I can go, um, um, you know, I wish I could become more, have more clarity in my life. I wish I can have a, you know, uh, God willing, a, you know, more calmness in my life. I wish I can be able to, to sit down and, and write a, my book eventually. I need a time where I can cultivate my desires because we already spoke about before that we speak our desires out. To the extent that we speak our desires out, we can cultivate desire, we can cultivate yearning, and that's what eventually happens in life. You have, we end up getting what we desire in our yearning. So this is another thing. If you don't have a time to talk to your creator, where, where are you going to go and manifest your desires? Opposite, when we don't have that time, you know what we do? We watch everybody else hit their desires. We watch everybody else hit their goals. You can't be a fan in life. You got to be in the game. There's a difference between being a fan and watching everybody else win and you winning. And this is something where if I don't take the, I have to, I have to re realize that I have a lot of distractions in my life and I'm becoming too much of a fan. I'm, a, I'm becoming a fan to everybody. I need to become the player in the game versus the fan in the game. And if we don't have that ability to, 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 you know, to have that where we express what we want in our lives, to have a set time, to even sit down for 20 minutes to talk to our creator, then we're always going to be the fan in the game. We're always going to be watching, uh, watching other people. Because remember, the way they got to where they got to is by tremendous amount of discipline and tr tremendous amount of working on what they're dealing with today. And this is where I ask myself, you know, sometimes I have to give up things because I don't want to be a fan in the game. I want to be in the game. And that's a question you have to ask yourself. Where do you want to put? Do you want to be in the game or do you want to be watching the game all the time? And that's something that overall we, we all have tremendous gifts and we have to develop it. And this is exactly what Rabbi Nachman says. You have to take your gifts and you have to develop them. So that's another strategy of his bodhidut. Just the ability to have a time where you can manifest, where you can talk to your creator about your desires, talk to your creator about your yearnings, where you want to go, what you want to do. And it's extremely important. We can't just watch things happen. We have to make things happen. And the where the person is going to, whoever is going to make things happen is the one opening up their mouth and building that desire because God wants you to speak it out. And Rav Nachman says, speech is exactly where what creates the vessels. So speech itself is a manifestation of your desires. And this is where, you know, this is where I see areas in people's lives all day long. It's a reaction. Reaction, reaction, reaction to life. I had a rough day. Netflix, check out. And then the next day, it's a repeated pattern. So that's something that we don't want. We want to have the ability to have a set time to create a place for manifestation, desires, etc. Another very important concept of, this, of his bodhidut is dealing with people. Unless you live in, you know, Greenland or Iceland and you're completely secluded, you're going to have issues with people today. Rav Nachman said it. There's, we're not safe from this. All of us were often trying to, um, we're often trying to clearly, you know, we're trying to avoid people sometimes in life. We're trying to, um, you know, we're, we're very difficult people in our lives. We all have them. Everybody has their share of difficult people in their lives that they're, they're constantly thinking about. And there would be no way for you to go and have a different view of that person unless you have a specific time to talk about God, give me the patience to deal with this person. Let me recognize that person's limitations. Please, Hashem, help me. I'm completely failing in this relationship. This relationship is going south. Allow me to have a proper time to develop, get this relationship better. And Rav Nachman tells us your relationships and your quality of zivugim are both dependent upon your quality of prayer. So when you're dealing with difficult people in our lives, as the Baal Shem Tov says many times, it's usually they're projecting exactly, you're projecting exactly what bothers about them 
what you don't like about them is usually something that we're holding inside. So this is why today, you know, the majority of issues I'm dealing with the, you know, toxic spouse. I'm dealing with the toxic situation. I'm dealing with this toxic. We have these people in our lives. You can't be safe from it. So what you need is you need a specific amount of you need a time to find a way to find mercy in those people to find the right strategy for those people but if you don't have this you're not going to you're going to have very difficult relationships that just turn the world the wrong way i can't tell you one person that i've met that has not told me i started praying i started becoming more merciful and my relationships changed yes when your relationships with your creator change your relationships with people will change. Remember that very clearly. It's d directly connected to the extent that I fix my relationship with my creator. I fix my relationship with people. People are just a reflection. This is why our sages say when a person has many friends below, he has many friends above. But when he has many enemies below, he also has many enemies above. Creators trying, our sages are trying to tell us something very important. If we can't make peace with people, specifically difficult people in our lives, then that's showing us that we're not going and putting the time and effort in order to get that relationship where it needs to go. Easier said than done. Nobody's telling you you're, you're going to be safe, but at least if you have a time that you could talk, create of the world. I'm hitting a C minus in my relationship with, with this person. I, I can't. I can't deal with it. I don't have the head for it. I need help. Nobody's telling you to hit an A every day. But tell your creator, listen, I have a C minus. And I can't get past the C minus. No matter what I'm doing, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying whatever I can. Please give me a strategy in order for me to get this relationship better. When you're doing that, you're not asking God to call the mafia and say, you know what, this guy in my life is very difficult. I need you to whack him and get rid of him in my life. We, we can't do that. We can't ask our creator to just completely, completely cut every toxic person out of our lives or every situation. We have to find a way to put, it, to put boundaries, but sometimes we have to find a way to recognize they have limitations. And you can't just say everybody who's not happy well is toxic. That's also, we have to be careful with this. We have to be careful to become more, more, more merciful, etc. Like I said, I am a Scorpio myself. It is not easy. But all I can do is I can tell my creator, I will talk to you about it. And if you can help me, I will be successful at it. If you don't help me, I don't have a shot. This is pretty much how I speak about it. I don't, I don't, it's not a question of whether or not I can do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. But if my creator helps me in my life, then I'm able to have success in that area of my life. Period. This is where you need to understand that. It's, and Rav Nachman tells us this exactly black and white. What does he tell us? He says his bodhidut is a very high beneficial practice. And he's saying here, this is because through this practice, a person can attain everything good in this world and in, this, in the world to come. What Rav Nachman is telling you, everything that you can attain in this world and in the world to come, you are going to get it by doing his bodhidut, by talking to your creator. Period. And he's saying here, and the reason why some of the things we have not accomplished is because we haven't prayed for it or we haven't prayed for it enough. And I can't express to you how important this is in, this is in your life. His bodhidut will help you make the, the proper boundaries. His bodhidut will tell you the right strategy. Also, Rav Nachman tells us exactly the same thing. What does he tell us here? Lesson, lesson 246, he tells us this. When a person secludes himself and expresses himself and talks to his pain before God. He confesses and feels his enorm enormous confusion and the blemishes has occurred. The divine present faces him, expressing himself to him, and also in pain. For every blemish a person has in his soul is also a blemish of the divine presence. The divine preference comforts this person and gives him the, the right strategies to rectify the damages, period. Do you understand what that's saying here? He's telling us here. When we are able to speak to our Creator and tell Him all of our pain and all of our issues in our life and all the blemishes that we've had, and He's also, because you have to understand something, your Creator is also in pain. When you're in pain, your Creator's in pain, period. It's not, we're thinking, I'm in pain, 
and my creator is, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's just up, up in heaven doing nothing. No, he's in pain, you're in pain. Because we're constantly getting these lessons in our life to grow. But to the extent that we don't, we don't accept the growth, then obviously he suffers. And it's almost the same relationship that, you know, when you have people, you want to help them, and they don't want to listen. I mean, I'm sure we, we know tons of people out there that need tremendous amount of help. And what's their problem? They just don't want to listen. So that hurts the person wanting to give. It doesn't allow him to give. So the, the pain of that person not wanting to listen, he's in tremendous amount of pain. But the greater the pain is the person who's trying to help him that doesn't want to listen. So you could see they're really, they're really, really, really in it together. Both of them are really, really in it together. This is something that we really, really need to understand. It's We're both in it together. And this is where his bodhidut is not just about you talking to God. It's you are... You are talking, you're expressing your soul. It's all oneness. It's not just for you to make your creator happy. It's also to change yourself. Very, very important. That's another concept of this concept. You're not in it alone. Very few people, unfortunately, people say, well, I feel alone. I feel completely abandoned by my creator. Absolutely not. When we feel that we're abandoned, it's just because we're not letting our creator in our lives. Period. And I've been doing his about the for the past 10 years. All my classes come from, from my conversation with my creator. Every idea that I've had in my life has come from my creator. Every problem and every solution that I've had came with talking to my creator. I can tell you right now that my success comes from my prayer. The days that I'm not doing that, the days that I'm skipping on that, are the days that I'm completely a different person. It's not what I know. It's not what I know. It's just the it's, it's tremendous amount of pressure that we're all under. If we don't have a form of letting it out, if we don't have a form of expressing this, there's just too much pressure, too much chaos in the world for you to function without completely venting, complaining. It's just, it's going to happen. So you can say, decide the price of waking up earlier is going to be the price. The reward for that will be relief during the day versus the price of sleeping in. And that's going to be, you're just going to be constantly reacting to people today. And I can't tell you that enough. So remember, it's an expression of faith, number one. Second, it's a perfect place to cope where you can express yourself. Number three, it's, a, it's the best way to, dev- the, to cultivate your yearnings and desires. Number four, it's a tremendous place to deal with difficult people and find a way to, 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 you, know, to you know, there's no way that you're going to be able to find a good point in somebody when you're fighting with them. There's no way. When you're charged up emotionally and you're trying to find a good point in that person, you're not going to be able to do it. You have to do it the next morning. When your mind is clear and you're able to go revisit that situation completely different. <clears throat> There's another great concept about his bodhidut which refers to as judgment. The way our creator set up the world is very simple. You can either have a trust in your creator, fear of heaven, or you can unfortunately have fallen fears. Today, the majority of the world has these fallen fears. What happens is when you have a fallen fear, you give jurisdiction over that thing to have power over you. Basically, your creator says, listen, if you don't decide to fear me, if you don't trust in me, then I have to leave you up to the science of anything. But if you decide to have faith in me and you decide to trust in me, then I can give you a divine supervision that is not like you're stuck with the odds. So today, you see today, everybody's like in a control. They're, con- they're trying to control everything. They're trying to be super safe. They're trying to be... But we're not, we're not seeing the big picture. And it's, you're not even allowed to give energy. Of course, you have to be careful. You have to have common sense. But when we start putting fear in things, we start putting fear in governors, we start putting fear in presidents, we start putting fear in viruses, we start putting fear in anything that is not fear of heaven, those things now have the ability to seek jurisdiction over you and have the power to harm you and affect you, period. If you fear your enemy, then your enemy now has a power to have jurisdiction to harm you. And heaven will sometimes allow that because you chose to be under that jurisdiction. Or you could decide to have a divine jurisdiction, which is to trust and, and fear only your creator. And when you trust and fear only your creator, your creator supervises you 
and he makes sure he protects you and guards over you in those situations. So today you could ask yourself, do you want divine protection or do you want to fear situations? So that's another thing, to elevate your fears to your creator. When you have fear, 100% fear of your creator, he's running the world, everything's him. Again, I'm not telling you to be careless. I'm not telling you to be, but to the extent that we don't trust in him, and we all of a sudden we start living with anxiety, and we start fearing other people and things, what happens is, is we lose that divine supervision. You lose that protection from heaven. What in the world, how in the world can you live today without heavenly protection? Why would you want, you, you really want to be left to odds today? You really want to be left to nature? No, we don't want to be left to the name Elohim. So that's another thing, is bodhidut is a place to recognize. If you have an emotion, you have anxiety, you have grief, you have, the, God forbid, any of these negative emotions, it's the time to ask yourself, why am I feeling this emotion and what am I doing about it? And I can guarantee you, if you have an anger issue, if you have anxiety, those are very connected to fearing something else but your Creator. When you have trust in your Creator, these negative thoughts completely go away. We don't have these anxieties, we don't have these fears. It's not possible. But when you don't have these fears in your Creator, these lower fears, such as anxiety, such as viruses and, and all kinds of things, and, and, it, and you just become obsessed, obsessed with control, and, 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 and fate, and doctors, and, and etc. And then you're not, you're not living a life, pretty much. You're more afraid to, you're, unfortunately, sometimes we're afraid to live. We're afraid to live. You're so worried about that, you're just, we're not living. So this is a very, very important message that I can live completely different. I can go into a court, and I could say the word, Ein Odvivado, which means there's nothing but God. Then the judge, the prosecution, nobody has power over me. If I'm meant to lose the case, I'm meant to lose the case. But if I'm meant to win the case, I'm going to give the direction directly to my Creator. That's another thing you have to cultivate. You have to cultivate and take these lower fears and elevate them to your Creator. Because the root of all these anxiety, anger, it's very rooted in control. And the reason why we control in the first place is because we don't have trust. We, if we had trust, we don't control. Very, very simple. When you trust situations, you don't seek to control them. You, you, you learn... You, you enjoy the outcome, but to the extent that you have all this fear and control, all you're doing all day long is trying to just, you know, f control, 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 which leads to anger and all, the, all these negative things, emotions, etc. It's very, very important. Another very big principle in his bodhidut is that you cannot have your creator is only with a person who has a settled mind. So the reason why sometimes we, we distance ourselves from our creator it's because we lack a settled mind. We don't have a place. We don't have a settled mind. Our mind's going 150 miles per hour. We can't even gather our thoughts. We, we don't know what's what. So you have to also recognize when you have a settled mind, you're going to get closer to your Creator. When we lack a settled mind, you're going to be a run away from your Creator. Period. So that's another thing, settling your mind. And the, one of the greatest ways to settle your mind is having a conversation, conversation, letting things out, expressing how you feel, even if you're in pain, if you, if you don't understand, whatever it is, at least you know that this is the only solution and this is the only way to fix any situation. The last thing I want to talk about is obviously gratitude. Gratitude. You know, we don't have, sometimes unfortunately, we have a very short memory. I mean, I myself, if I don't wake up every morning asking my creator, thanking my creator, somehow memory goes. You know, we, we have a couple of things that don't go our way. Next thing you know, we forget about all the good things our creator does for us. So it's very, very important to have a specific time where you're able to be grateful and to show abundance in the universe and to show your creator, look how much abundance you gave me. Look how much blessings you gave me. Look how much, look how blessed I am. Instead of walking around saying, look how stressed I am. What do you think is going to attract more blessings in your life? To show your Creator how blessed you are or to exp tell your Creator how stressed you are? I mean, common sense. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning and I tell my Creator how blessed I am and how much He's done for me and how much blessings I see in my life and how much I see, how much I don't take anything for granted, then He sees that I'm a grateful person and He's going to give me more. But when I'm walking around focusing on how stressed I am all day long, and how stressed, and that person makes me stressed. Without checking in in heaven, without checking in, without praying for it, 
then obviously I can't get the right mercy in order for me to exit that, that situation. So this is th these are simple things that we just we, we don't you know, we just don't have. And, and, the, and the number one thing that people are going to tell you is they don't have time for it. They don't have time to talk to their creator. And the greatest analogy of this would be the same. Imagine a guy's cutting his tree. It's taking him five hours to cut his tree. And you're telling him, listen, let's just take 20 minutes a day. You could take your knife, we'll sharpen it. And when you sharpen your knife, you're gonna cut this tree in 20 minutes. And he tells you, no, I don't have five minutes. To that means if you could sharpen your knife, it'll take you five minutes to sharpen your knife, but, and you'll be much, th do things much quicker and much more efficiently, but you tell your creator, you tell the guy, I don't have time to sharpen my knife. And you can pick why, why don't you have time to sharpen your knife? Because I'm too busy cutting a log with a dull knife. I mean, what do, you, what do you tell such a person? What do you tell such a person? I mean, I, I can't, you don't, you, you don't, your strategy's off. If things are becoming way too heavy, if things are becoming way too heavy, it's because we're, we're holding too much in. So if this guy doesn't have five minutes to sharpen his knife, they're going to have 20 minutes to go sharpen his knife one minute so he can cut the tree in, in a much quicker way, so everything becomes heavy for his, for, his, for his life. Your marriage becomes heavy. Basically, if we, don't marry, if we don't sharpen our minds, if we don't sharpen the saw, things become heavy in your life, period. When your areas in your life where you sharpen the saw by checking in your Creator, by speaking to him, it's, things become lighter in life. And that's, the, that's the, one of the biggest messages I have. We're walking around with dull knives. The knife's dull. We're, and then we're frustrated because it's not cutting fast enough. And that's the problem. We're not sharpening our minds. And this is an area you need to sharpen your mind. And the morning is the greatest way to sharpen your mind by expressing gratitude, by talking, telling your creator there's, only, there's no fear but him, by help, asking him to help you deal with difficult people in your lives, by giving you the uh, the ability to um, properly have a, a place to store your emotions, and you don't walk around with with all of this weight. And, and this is and, and this is one of the things I tell people: you have to sharpen your knife. You have to sharpen your mind. If you don't sharpen your mind, things are going to get heavy. And this is what our sages say. If you do what you do in the beginning, there will not be an end. When we first started getting spiritual, we were very excited. We started getting excited. We were sharp. We were on the ball. We were excited to get up. We were excited to do something. And then life all of a sudden came. And next thing you know, we lost that excitement. We lost that spark. Things became dull. Same thing. Look what you did in your... Imagine, look, what did you do in your engagement? If you do what you did in your engagement you do that in your marriage, your marriage is going to be good. But if we sit there and all of a sudden we let go of ourselves, then our marriages become dull. We don't sharpen the knife. The majority of people married, they don't sharpen the knife. They, they, don't, they stop going out. They stop, doing, they, they stop romancing each other. The same thing. Your creator needs to be romanced. Your creator needs to be romanced. Your creator needs to, to, to recognize that you recognize him and he wants a relationship with you. He does not just want religion. This is exactly what Rabbi Nachman told us. First, he told his followers, first be happy, and also, you can be, also be religious. The emphasis is, if I'm not doing things with a relationship, if I don't see the joy in what I'm doing, then clearly I have not sharpened my knife. Clearly, I have an emotion, these emotions are blocking me. And this is, and his bodhidut is the perfect way to talk to him. Stop, wor don't worry about what you're gonna say to him. Uh, don't worry about what, what, how things come out. The main point, like I said before, the main point is you are checking in and you're expressing to him that you believe that this is the only solution out there, is to talk to your Creator. And this is what the emphasis of the whole breast love movement is about. Rabbi Rush came to my house. I have a Shalom Bayit issue. Talk to your Creator about it. I lost my Amuna. Talk to your creator about it. I mean, every single answer becomes the same thing. You're not talking to your creator. We're not, we're, we, we have the greatest gift under our eyes, and we don't take advantage of it. We don't take advantage of it because we become too distracted. And this is exactly what we're dealing with today.
the kotzer ruach, the shortened spirit, the lack of breath, the frustration, where we don't have the head to even check in. We're always checking out. We're checking out with our phones. We're checking out constantly. I'm not telling you, you're a human being. You're going to be on your phone. I'm not telling you to do this all day long. I'm advising you at least take the morning. You have to have a powerful morning. If you have a powerful morning, your day will go completely different. If you don't have a powerful morning, the day is going to catch up on you. And these days, eventually, they become years, etc. So these are, if we'll take some questions about his bodhidut. But remember, emotionally wise, um, spiritually wise, dealing with relationships, your own mental health. I mean, there's, there's, I can't express one thing. I'm manifesting things. I can't express one thing that has so much benefit. And this is why I speak constantly about whatever we're doing with, whatever your goals you're trying to have. For example, your, your person's single. He's trying to get married. He has to talk to Hashem. Hashem, tell me what I can do to attract my soulmate. Tell, tell me what I'm doing. What is inside of me that's not allowing you to bring that person into my life? When you talk like that, you're going to get answers. And God's going to show you through people the, the, what, what's happening while you're not attracting that person. It's going to, he's going to show it to you through people. And you're going to see it's so clear. And this is why it's so clarity. It's, it's a form of divine providence. I myself start sometimes, depending on the state I'm in, but I myself, I try to put music on. I try to um, breathe before. I try to put myself in a very, very good spirit. Those are the days that I'm really, really in a good spirit. But sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm completely overwhelmed and I'm just telling my creator, help me. And I sometimes I'll just say the same word, help me, help me, I'm lost. That it will be my Hezbollah. I can have two different experiences in my Hezbollah. But the number one thing is I know the only solution to every single problem is coming from my creator because I'm displaying to him that I have faith in him by speaking to him. And I'm also recognizing that when I'm not my best self, when I'm not my best self, I'm going to end up becoming dull and I'm going to be that. So this is why it's very important. One, one of the things that I like to start with sometimes when I'm, it's, is, is the 50th gate. Arash, nice to see you, brother. So the 50th gate is basically the Breslov version of Tehillim. If you, every time, if you guys don't understand, why, why do we read Tehillim in the first place? The reason why we read Tehillim in the first place, well, what, what is Tehillim all about? Tehillim is David Amalek's personal his bodhidut. If you ask me today, what is Tehillim? Tehillim is his bodhidut. David Amalek woke up at midnight, the harp came in, and he started talking to God. That is exactly what you are reading constantly. You're taking David Amalek's Ruach HaKodesh. Exactly when you read to him, what do you think? He was running away from his son. He was running away. He was pleading with his creator. He was thanking his creator constantly. So Rabbi, Na- Rabbi Natan basically vo- wrote his version of that. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll speak. I'll take this book called The 50th Gate. You can buy it on Amazon.com. There's many versions of it, either version. And you could just sp- you could get warmed up. It helps you get warmed up. You know, a good example is, for example, um, you know, Lesson 15, where he talks about prayer. He says, please, Hashem, have mercy on me. Take pity on me. See how low I've fallen. I'm in terrible trouble, worse than a drift, somebody drift at sea, lying in the most dangerous place on a boat. I have no idea where I should run to, where I should fly to, where should I escape from, because I have inner torment. I have no idea how to cry out to you. For years I've been calling out to you to try to stir you from love and mercy and release me from my evil thoughts, to bring me out of this darkness. Through the power of your tzaddikim, you've taught us that prayer helps with everything. Prayer is the basics for all true closest to God. You hear all my prayers no matter how what. You even listen to the cry from the belly of hell. Then why will you not attend to my words? Why are you not listening to me? Just This is example. This is an example of Rabbi Natan talking to, to to, to his creator from his own heart. And he's telling him he's stuck in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle emotionally. Uh, this is how he's talking about it. So you could see we are also, God, I'm, I'm surrounded by negativity. So this is a this is a phenomenal, if you just want like a style, um, if you really, really want a style on how to get that expression out, the 
fiftieth gate is phenomenal because it, it, that's his Rabbi Natan's his bodidut. That's Rabbi Natan the way he spoke to God. But I guarantee you today, your level of mental clarity is your level of spiritual clarity today. Your level of mental clarity is very connected to your spiritual clarity today. And this is exactly what today we're 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 we're, we're, we're not focused. You're, according to your theory, is your therapy. If your theory is only a doctor can help you, no. You have to recognize your theory has to be only my creator can help me. A doctor is just an agent to assist me. That means pray, do what you ask Hashem for the right doctor instead of just relying on doctors, just relying on people. Ask your creator, send me the right therapist. Send me somebody I can go to. Send somebody that can help me. Then just wake up and go to a therapist. <laughs> the, the prayer you have before you do those things creates a tremendous, because you're recognizing that person is just an agent. They're not really the per person solving the issue. They're just the agent to solve it. Just like I'm not solving your issue. I'm just the agent telling you what I think needs to, to be worked on. When I do my classes, I'm the agent telling you what exactly I need to do. So this is the difference. We, we're not looking, we're, we're not, we don't see the agent part. We're too focused on the people. People are not, send me the right, send me through you the right person and when you look at that things take a tremendous shift in our lives and at least if things might not work out and, and things might okay you, you're stuck in this problem okay you have a god forbid you have a son that has this but at least you have you have a sense of of tranquility that you've done everything you can you know when i prayed for my son and I, we you know i did i know i i, I had, when he passed away i know i did everything i can i know i did everything possible that i can and if it was meant to happen, I know there was not one, one mountain, one stone that was not overturned. So I was able to release and say, this is heaven's will. This is the only reason why I was able to overcome such, something like, like this. But if we don't have that, if we don't, at least when you, you know, you're, 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 you're not attracting the right relationship, you're not attracting the marriage, and if you put the time in this boat, and if it's not meant to work out, then I know at least you know you put the time in for whatever happened to happen, and at least you could feel comfortable whatever decision you made, that decision was made after many hours of, of prayer. You'll feel completely different, even if things do not work out. When you do that, you don't even care if it works out, you know it's for the best, because that, that situation was earned in speech. Versus, always, did I make the right decision? Did I not make the right decision? Did I make the right decision? And you're always second-guessing yourself. You're living in the past. You're worried about making the right decision. Talk to your creator. Talk to your creator. Tell him about the decision you want to make. And that will give you the peace of mind. That's the most important thing is you get that peace of tranquility that I checked the box. And if it didn't work out, it was not meant to work out. And if it did work out, then that's wonderful also. But at least I know I checked the box. I put my heart into it. There's nothing that you will feel any regret about those things. The reason why we feel the guilt and the shame and the and the, all those things because maybe we could have done more, maybe you know we, we don't know that decision. We don't, we're not getting that calmness in our heart. And the reason we're not getting that calmness in our heart is because we haven't nullified ourselves. We haven't surrendered to God's will in that situation. We still think there could have been another will. So that's the only reason why people can go through very incredibly difficult situations incredibly complicated situations and still have that calmness that calmness is given to you by your creator your creator gives you that calmness he gives you that calm confidence it's not coming because of your strength believe me it's coming because of your humility that you've allowed him in your lives you've accepted whatever's happened and you've surrendered to the ultimate goal which is oneness which is all good that is why you can feel calm even after a breakup, after a divorce. And failure will not, will not make you lose yourself. But when you don't do that, when you don't have that conversation, you don't have that relationship with God, something happens in your life, then you're always second-guessing, always second-guessing, talking bad about yourself, you know, putting your, you know, hiding from yourself. What are you hiding from yourself? You put everything you could. You did everything you could. And, and, and I think that is one of the greatest things you can have is that calm confidence when things don't work out and you don't doesn't affect you it didn't work out it didn't work out it's okay 
I can have a broken heart, but I know for 100% sure that I put everything in. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. When you're making a major life decision, you put the right time, you spoke to your creator, and it didn't work out, then you know 100% it was for the best. Period. But when you don't put that time in, and you don't have that conversation with the creator, something happens. You're going to be stuck in your head, guessing, could it have been better? Could it not have been better? I'm just, I'm not telling you I'm stronger than everybody. I'm just telling you I have a system and I have a method and I know who I am and I know, the, and I know what I need to do. It's not whether I'm smarter or not smarter. I, I know where to put the energy today versus putting the energy in the wrong place. So, may Hashem help us. We're getting way too distracted. Rav Nachman's clarity is, there's no greater clarity. Talk to your creator. Open your mouth. Speak to him. Just trying to explain to you the power where you can get to. I'm, I, I went to public school. I never went to yeshiva. I picked up a book on Rav Nachman's teachings. And here we go today. I'm just trying to explain to you where you can get to with these teachings. It's not because I was had this knowledge. It's because Rabbi Nachman can get you to the highest levels, period, in any area of your life. And you have to really believe that. And I think I've shown that to people, that you can get to very, very high levels of concentration and, 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 and really, really, God, thank God, be successful both financially, spiritually, and emotionally. So I'm gonna, we can take a few questions on, on this, but uh, I think it was pretty clear, pretty much what we need to do. How to practically come out of resentment stage that has been going on for a few years? Okay, so practically it's very simple. Talk about why you're resentful. You know, what, what's the root of, you know, why would I get, ask your creator, why should I, you're not allowed to harbor hate in your heart. That's the one thing. We're not allowed to have resentment in our heart. Because what happens is when we have heart, resentment in our heart, what happens? That blocks us off spiritually. That's another thing you need to understand. Anything that you're holding on to for other people, your creator's holding on to you. So you have to recognize something very important. The reason why I want to let go below is because to the extent that I let go below, in heaven they let go for me. It means I have a much easier life when I forgive people and I look the other way. I'm not saying I'm permitting it, but I'm recognizing I was hurt because somebody else hurt me because they were hurt. Why should that let me block my spiritual blessings above? When I know better in a higher consciousness state, I'll recognize that person's limitations and I'm able to let go, period. And when they let go, in heaven, also they let go for me. Where do you begin? You begin by, by first talking to... The number one thing Rav Nachman says, is this is not like an Amazon Alexa. You have to talk to your creator what's going on in your life. What, what, what's bothering you? What's going on in your life? I don't want you to think so much about what to do. I just want you to talk. just want you to talk. T- 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 talk tell your creator how you feel. Tell him what's going on in your life. Tell me exactly where you're, what, what you, where you're succeeding, where you're not succeeding. So remember, we spoke about many times, gratitude. You want to start with gratitude. But sometimes I tell people, you know, you, you, you know, sometimes, you know, a guy's house is being foreclosed on. You're going to say gratitude? You're going to say, God, help me. Help me. Why, am I, why is my house being foreclosed on? What can I do to fix the situation? Are you trying to make me move? Every situation in your life calls for a different message. So sometimes I don't like to tell people what to do. I just want you to have a time where you go out and speak to your creator from your heart. And you're going to see most of the times that I'm telling you honestly, things came out of my mouth that I never would have thought about. What I'm focusing more is connecting. I'm not going to his book. I'm not talking to my creator in order to get. I'm more focusing. I want to connect. I want to connect to him exactly where I am. If I'm broken... I want to connect to him when I'm broken. If I'm happy, I want to connect to him while I'm happy. But more importantly, I'm not thinking about getting, did I do it right? I'm thinking about more of recognizing that I need to speak. I need to speak. I want to speak. Sometimes when you can't speak, your, your prayer should be, creator of the world, I want to speak. My mouth is closed. I feel like I'm trapped. I feel like I'm in Egypt. Please help me speak. And that anger of not speaking, not in a bad way, will eventually create that heat which will allow the the words to come out properly. Another amazing thing to do is whatever classes that whoever's on the WhatsApp group, whoever's on the WhatsApp chat, if you listen to a class that you happen to like, take notes, the next morning, talk about those 
uh, those subjects in the class. Talk about that. You know, we spoke about self-esteem today. Okay, Hashem, do I have self-esteem? How is my self-esteem? Are, are, people, are people constantly getting to me? Do I feel constantly insulted? Etc. Talk about, the, for example, in Tevet. This month, Tevet was a connection with what? With, with anger and chaos. So what was the majority of my speaking this month was, Hashem, save me from anger. I see the energy outside. I see what's going on. Let me not get affected by this anger. Let me, be, let me speak calmly. Let me be able to respond, not react. So this month, there was a lot of begging, to, begging my Creator just to be able to speak to Him where I don't get anger, where I don't give me the strategy. Let me be careful not to take things personal. So the majority of my prayers this month had a lot to do with anger and fear and, and really talking to Him about that. Where other months, you know, there's a different energy in the air. The energy is completely different. You have to connect to the energy at wherever you're at. You know, sometimes your marriage is doing really great, and sometimes your marriage is not doing so great. So, so God creates a lack, so you could speak to Him through that lack. The, the purpose of a lack is for you to create, get closer to Him through that lack. So how do you forgive somebody that resents and hates you? First of all, you don't even know if that person resents or hates you. Maybe they're upset. Maybe they're, we don't know if they hate you. You know, sometimes this is another thing. We have to be careful when we think somebody else hates us. and We have to be careful that we're not projecting something we're not making worse than it is. So again, anytime that you, something that you feel somebody that hurts you and hates you, pray for them. Pray for them that they should have found kindness in their heart. Pray for them that you should be forgiven. And also, ask yourself, what did I do to maybe upset them? That's another thing. We don't want to always do the same thing over and over and constantly get people to hate us. We want to say, Did I speak to that person the right way and help me make peace with them? Help me make peace with them. So these are just, that, that person who hates you and resents you, it's, he's just giving you an invitation to talk to God about what you're going through. Forget who that person is. I want you guys to really, again, don't focus on the messenger, focus on the message. Remember that. Don't focus on the messenger. Focus on the message. This is sometimes we don't understand. We get too caught up in the message, in the messenger. What's the message behind somebody who hates me? What did I do? Is it something that maybe my creator, whatever it is, I, I don't know what that situation is, but more importantly, get the message from why that person hates you or why that situation in your life is going that way. That's what I want you to focus on more is that message behind that. What if you do his bodhidu in the morning, but you have to rush to get to school and work? I think it's Miriam's asking. So Miriam, you have to wake up a little earlier. I mean, this is, remember, prayer renews your energy. We're, we, we, sometimes we associate prayer as an exhaustion. It's the opposite. If prayer is done right and you talk to your creator, you should have more energy. That's the difference. So technically, it's like a workout. You don't, we don't get tired when we work out. We usually walk out of the gym with more energy than we had before. So that's something prayer. You should try to wake up earlier. Ask Hashem to help you wake up earlier. Ask Him to have a set time. Ask Him to, do, to be able to do that. How do you wake up so early and can be in a good mood and you're not tired in the gratitude state of your Creator and His body do it? It usually, I think this is for, uh, okay, to ask the, the, how do we wake up early and be in a good mood and not tired and gratitude state to your Creator? So usually what happens is, is it's going to take time sometimes, obviously. You know, when you start, when it becomes a habit, then you know that after his bodhidut, you feel good. So you're able to wake up in the morning, but you recognize that that morning is going to, the, the, the exhaustion is going to last you for four or five minutes, but after that, you're going to feel much better. So that's another thing. Don't think of how you're going to feel before. Think about how you're going to feel after. So this is a very, every morning. I, I'm not, I don't wake up and say, wow, good morning to the world. No, I'm, it's like, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm tired. I wish I could sleep more. But I know at the end of the day, after the, the prayer, after this bodhidut, after talking to God, I feel much better and I'm much more energized after I pray. So it's usually I'm not focusing on the feeling before I pray. I'm usually focusing on the, on the, on the feeling afterwards I pray. Period. And that's, that's the same thing with anybody else. If I asked you, listen, forgive, that, forgive somebody, you're going to tell me, I don't want to do it. I'm, I don't like that person. That person, it, it makes me very uncomfortable to forgive them. I don't want to forgive them. 
if we if I asked you to do it before, but if I told you, imagine how you would feel if you're able to forgive that person, and you forgave that person from your heart. How would you feel afterwards? You would feel completely like you made a decision on based on your soul. So that's another very very important message: focusing on the feeling afterwards, not the feeling before. All right. I think we're going to cut it. I think it's nine o'clock. Maybe I'll ask one or two questions. But again, it, it's it's the beginning should be if even if you have nothing to say, but just saying, created the world, I want to have a conversation with you. Help me have a set time to speak to you. Help me have a time. You've already told us how important this devotion is. I don't, I don't know when to do it. I don't know how to do it. I am confused. But let me at least have the ability, the ability to speak to you. Just when you express yourself, when you express yourself and telling him that you want to do this, I want to want, that itself is a tremendous amount. That's, that itself is the approach. And Bezrat Hashem, Hashem should help us all. And we should all help each other. And we should all have our open hearts. And we should not walk around with closed hearts and fear and, and low energy. This is not what we're here in this world for. We're obviously here in this world to create. We're here in this world to give. We're here in this world to flourish. We're definitely not here in this world to you know panic and be afraid every single time we see a deadline. All right, guys, have a great day. May Hashem bless all of you. We should all start, Bizrat Hashem, we should all start with a lot of strength and whatever, whatever is sec, who's New Year secular, start. It's a great time to start. It's a great time to, do, that's the number one way to start. And remember, guys, be patient with this. Be patient with this. Don't, don't look at the scoreboard. Don't focus on, did I have a good one? Did I not have a good one? Just do it. Do it, and the feelings will come. Sometimes it'll be amazing, the feelings. Sometimes the feelings will be completely broken. We're not, we're always in a different state of our lives. We're not, we're not, we're not Amazon Alexas, we're not robots. We have a different energy at all times, and different energies call for different situations. Okay, have a great day.